Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, and Panama Buena Vista Union School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We are live today at Berkshire Elementary School, Aces After School Program, home of the Eagles, and we're here to do the math! Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Chuck. Our phone tutors are here to take your calls if you have uh, any questions about your math homework, getting ready for a test. I know we've just come back from vacation, so everybody's getting started back up for the new uh, grading period. So give us a call at 636-4357 here in Bakersfield. You can call toll-free in the outlying areas, 1-866-636-6284. You can email us questions at dothemath at kern.org. You can watch the show online at dothemathonline.net. And you can see us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, you know what? There are a lot of things we need to take care of. And that reminds me, there are a couple of email questions for you to look okay, at after good. we get through our fair today. Right. So just a reminder before I forget about that. Right. And happy 2016. Happy 2016, yes. A new year is upon us. A new year, election year, a leap year. Yeah, big. There's all sorts of yes, stuff going all on. Kinds of things. And uh, one of the big things, especially at school today, the amount of rain that we received in <laughs> Bakersfield today. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much exactly it was, but it seemed like we had as much rain today as we had all of last oh, year or something. Like I mean, that's how long and heavy that rain came down in some parts of the city. And you said that the grading period is just starting. For the high for schools, the high schools. Yes, yes. Because I know for the elementary and junior highs, it's coming towards the end of the second quarter, mm -hmm. but starting for the high schools. Yes. So one, kind of get a head start and get yeah. a nice grade going for this semester, or if you need to shore things up That's right. before the end of this semester for the elementary and junior high kids. As always, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. And with the rain, that brings up today's Math in the News. Oh. All right, so today's math in the news has nothing really directly to do with rain, but you know I'm going to work it around somehow okay, so we okay. figure out the uh, rain thing going on today. So when it rains, a lot of people are not outside. They're going to find other activities to do inside. Yes. One of those many activities, if you have an opportunity to go out someplace, would be maybe we'll go to the movies. Yes. Good. Any movies that you were able to see over the break, because that's an opportunity for a lot of teachers, people to go out and see movies when they... We uh, did see it. Star Wars over the break. And how did you like it? What, at one to five, what would you rate it? Five being the highest, one being the lowest. Um, one to five, um, four. It was pretty you good. You gave it a four? It was pretty good, yeah. So... The first three, well... Well, I was going to say, have you seen ones that are better than that, or are they all kind of fours I'd and below? I'd have to say um, a couple of the first ones back in the, you know, the, the, the episode, episodes four and five and six. So those were pretty good. Okay. Well, that's why I wanted to bring up the Star Wars, The Force Awakens, the yes. new movie that is out. A uh, lot of people excited about it, going out seeing it. Uh, kids that are younger than us mm -hmm. that were not around when the first Star Wars movies came out in the 70s That's right. are going back, looking at them, and so that they're kind of familiar with what's going on now. I know some people who sat and watched all six of the original Star Wars movies. That's and my son is one of those because he's still a teenager. And mm -hmm. they had, somebody had said, 
you don't have to go one through six in order like that. Do something in the middle, yep, and then go back, and yep. then so something like that. So, I guess that's the best way to watch them if you haven't seen any of them yet. I've heard uh, you could get by with just watching five of the first six. In fact. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, anyway, we move on from that because we need to figure out what the math is here. So that is the new movie, but it's the new movie for now, and something that I figured we go back to was something when we were growing up. Yes. Right? Spock, the Vulcan, Captain Kirk, and all those guys. Which is also bad. Star Trek. Yes. Which was around before Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, on the East Coast of New York, it was on late at night. Oh, really? Was it on late at night here? Do you no. remember? No, it was, it was early prime time, I believe. Okay. Well, anyway. You're just a little older than I am, I think. So maybe they had it on prime time all the kids. Maybe when it was first on. All right. So I figured, all right, this was something that I found that deals kind of with Star Trek. Do you remember star dates? Yes. Okay. So Kirk would always, like, star date, whatever it He'd is, give right? give that in his report. So okay. star dates are a mathematical formula. Uh-huh. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, we got to tie this into something here. <laughs> which varies depending on location in the galaxy, velocity of travel, uh -huh. and other factors, but it can vary widely from episode to episode. Yes. So I'm like, all right, great. Let's take a look at an example of a star date. So this is pretty complicated and it's lengthy. So we're just gonna go through it. <laughs> okay. All right. So imagine it's 1330 Eastern Standard Time, November 2nd, 1996. The last leap year, not including this one, was 1992. Now, you have to remember we're back in 96. Got it. That's 92 years of century passed as of January 1st, 1992. 92 times the number of days equals 33,603 days. This is A. All right, this is complicated. Got so it. So we're just going to kind of go through it. Kids that are watching going, all right, this is great. Let's just get through this and we'll get to the other part. But this is how they came up with star dates okay. for the program. Since there have been the full years, 92 through 95, you have all of these 366, 365s, 1,461 days. This is B. There have also been this many days in the months as of October 31st, 305 days, called this C. This month, because it is November, there has been one complete day. This is D. As of the time, 0.77 days have passed. This is E. 100 years is equal to this many days, call this F. So here's the star date formula. A plus B plus C plus D plus E, which is all of this up here. Right. Divided by F, which is this, gives you the star date. So to put it into format that Star Trek used, you simply multiply by 100,000. Therefore, you get 96839.8. That is the star date. Lovely, isn't that? Yes. So we'll leave that to Star Trek and those guys doing the star date. So I was like, what is something that the students are going to be able to use a little bit more useful? Time, but in the distance formula, distance is equal to rate times time. And see, on, on Star Trek, they had a problem with that because I think warp drive was like yeah. the speed of light changes Indeed. time. And so they, yeah. Yeah, and I'll give you a problem with that <laughs> later on. But first, you travel 162 miles in three hours. Find the average speed. Well, with the distance formula, distance being equal to rate times time, we'll put the distance that we know, 162, the rate times the time, which is 3. So all we did was substitute the 162 for the distance and the 3 for the time. Divide each side by 3. We simplify it. We see that the rate is 54, so the average speed is 54 miles per hour. And that is today's Math in the News. Kind of coming around the long way yeah. from, uh, hey, you know what? There was some rain out today and going to Star Wars and then Star Trek. And, uh, and, and interestingly enough, there is a connection now between Star Trek and Star Wars because J.J. Abrams is the, oh, is the director. One of the guys. He's done both of them now. So people were really excited to see him do Star Wars. I don't think he's searching for coins for a cup of coffee either. Right? Don't I think so. Well, you know what? We have a time problem that I would like you to work on right okay. now. Okay. All right. A simple time problem, right? Not no as complicated as doing a star date. So, Susie's family is planning a trip to the Grand Canyon. Now, first of all, because there are students that sometimes they get this thing, well, word problems are hard. 
the first sentence that I gave you, is there anything even relevant in there that we need to know as far as solving the problem possibly? Uh, no, Probably only that, not. No, only that there's a trip. The, yeah. Going to the Grand Canyon. It'll take five hours of driving. Five hours of driving. In addition to the five hours of driving, the family is planning to make three half-hour stops. Three one-half-hour stops. Okay. They would like to arrive at 3.30 p.m. Arrive at 3.30 p.m. 3.30 p.m. Now, if they want to get there at 3.30 and they have all of this planned, what time should they leave? That's the question. Okay. All right. So what we need to do is figure out how much time it's going to take for them to get there. No distance in this problem. It's just time. Right. So we need to know how much time they're going to take. And then I think what we can do is work backwards from 3.30 and take that time and work backwards to see where they have to start. So let's see what the total amount of time is going to be. The total time. Well, let's see. Driving time, they've given us already, is five hours. Now, there are three one-half hour stops, so that's going to be three times one-half. So three times a half an hour is three halves, right? Three over one times one-half. That's going to be one and one-half hours for their rest stops. So I'm going to add that to the five hours. And so the total time they're going to spend is six and a half hours. Right? So all we have to do now is work backwards from 3.30 and see where we end up. So one way you can do this is visually, I'm going to start here at 3.30. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to cheat. Okay. This is 3, so I know that on a clock, 3.30, we're halfway. But I'm going to put the hour hand on 3 and the minute hand on the 6 down here. So there's 3.30, okay? And I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to take that clock and I'm going to move it back 6 and a half. So let's do the half hour first. I'm going to move that half hour back to here, one half hour, and that's going to get me to 3 o'clock. So now, instead of at 3.30, here, let me erase this. So now, instead of at 3.30, I'm at 3 o'clock. All right. Now I'm going to keep going back. I could go one an hour at a time, but since I'm at 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock is a good benchmark. So let me take three more hours. I'm going to take three more hours, and I'm going to, so that's a half hour. Now I'm going to go three hours, and I'm going to go back one, two, three hours, and that's going to get me to 12 o'clock. So three hours gives me 12 o'clock. That's 12 noon. Okay, so I've gone a half hour. I've gone three hours. Now let me go three more hours. If I start here at 12 and go back three more hours, I'm going to go 11, 10, and 9. So three more hours is going to get me at 9 o'clock, and that's going to be 9 o'clock a.m. So if I start at 3.30 and I go back a half an hour, and then three hours, and then three more hours, these six and a half hours are going to get you to 9 a.m. So if they start their trip at 9 a.m. and they drive for six and a half hours, they should get to the Grand Canyon at 3.30 p.m. All right, nicely done. At warp speed, they would leave at 2.30 or what? <laughs> and get there before they started. Yeah. 636-4357 <laughs> is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. This an added bonus. We just found out we're going to have a sixth grade call-in contest during the month of January. So the way this works is if you're a sixth grade student, when you phone in, you definitely want to let us know who your teacher is. And if you're in a middle school where you go to different classes, mm -hmm. let us know the math class that you're in, because the sixth grade class that calls in the most will take a visit out to their classroom one day. We'll do some math games, Good. bring out some prizes and things like that. So for the month of January, it will be a sixth grade call-in contest. Speaking of sixth grade, I'm sure there are some sixth graders out at Berkshire Elementary with Mary Lou. 
Thanks, Mike. Yes, we are here live at Berkshire Elementary School, ACES After School Program, and I am here with Evan today. Hi, Evan. Hi. How you doing? Good. And you are in sixth grade, correct? Yes. And who, um, how long have you been at the school? Have you been here the whole time or yes. since kindergarten? Yes. What do you like best about sixth grade? The science class. Ooh, why? Because we get to do a fun experience with like right now we're learning about the El Nino. Okay, and what experiments are you doing with that? Not right now, but it's in past experiments we've been doing air pressure. Oh, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, so looking forward to the fun stuff you're doing with El Nino. Yeah. All right, but let's get to math, which is I'm sure your other favorite subject. Yes. Okay, so we have a math problem here in front of us, and it looks like you're studying coordinate planes. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to read our problem. It says, on a coordinate map, Sherry's house is at the point negative 4, negative 2. If each unit on the map represents one block, what is the distance between Sherry's house and the mall? Now, what do we need to do, Evan, in order to solve this? We need to find the point where Sherry's house is and the mall's point. Okay. Did we get that on there or did we forget the mall point? Um, okay, let's go ahead and first put Sherry's point on, which is what? Negative four and negative two. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Now tell, work me through this. Tell me how you're doing this. What does this first number represent? The first number represents the x-axis, which is negative 4, so we and go. Is this the x or is this the x? This is the x. Okay. The left to right. And when it's negative, we go left. Okay. And so here's negative 4, and our y-axis, we go to negative 2, so to negative 4, to negative 2. So Sherry's house would be right here. Okay. Now it says if each unit on the map represents one block, what is the distance between Sherry's house and the mall? So where would the mall be? Would this be the mall being point zero zero? No, actually the mall point would be positive 10 to negative 2. Oh, okay. So 2 to 10. So now that you did your plots, we need to find out the distance, correct? correct? And again, it tells us that each, what does this mean? It, each unit on the map represents one block. What does that mean? A, the unit represents the number next to it. So from the unit on range one block, so from, we would count from Sherry's house to the mall. So and one block, so we'd be counting like by ones. So we we counting negative four to positive 10. Okay, all right, go ahead and let's do that. So how many um, blocks away are they? That's one, right? One, okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's how long? 14 blocks from Sherry's house to the mall. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that 14 blocks. Now, you just put the points. You don't need to connect a line at all on it. Okay, so again, you're using a graph to help you find this out, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go to our second problem over here, and it's very similar to this that we just did, right? Yes. Well, this is Arthur, and he left his job at 5-4 um, at on a coordinate map and walk to his house, which is five, negative six. Each unit on the map, again, just like our other question, represents one block. How far did Arthur walk? So I'm going to let you lead us through this one. So Arthur left from his job at, a, at five, four, so we be plotting from positive five to positive four. So when it's positive, we go up instead of down. So, um, so Arthur's job would be left his job right, be right there, and from his house we it's neck five to negative six. So we go down, and 
Arthur's house would be right here. And so if we rep if each unit represents one block, we count by down by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's make sure of that. Okay, let's go again. Let's count with the numbers right here. Okay, because we know we're starting at four. Let's start here at this mark at three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, ten. Yep, there you go. So you are right. It is ten. So again, how far did Arthur walk? Ten blocks. And again, this is just simply, right, Evan, using a coordinate plane to help you draw out, to help you figure it out with any, without any calculations, huh? Yes. Yeah. Do you like these, the coordinate planes? Pretty easy, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. That's it. So back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you for that, Mary Lou. And nice to see all of the students out of Berkshire Elementary doing some great work this afternoon. We'll check back in with the Eagles in a little bit. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Do remember, this just came out moments ago, a uh -huh. sixth grade call-in contest is going on during the month of January. So anybody, feel free once again to call. Anybody can call, do the math. But we'll be keeping special track of all of the sixth grade students that call in because the classroom with the most sixth grade students that call in during the entire month oh, good. will be the ones Receiving the party, I guess you call it. I mean, because when we go in, we have a lot of fun. You don't have to do your regular math that day. Well, maybe you will, but you won't do it <laughs> while we're there. We'll do some other fun things and stuff like that. Bring out some prizes for everybody and uh, a festive day. And the sixth grade math classes have some really good problems to call in. I mean, they really yeah. start working on some stuff in sixth grade that uh, they could get, get them a lot ready of help. for high school because yes. a lot of that stuff they're doing in fifth and sixth, they'll probably see a lot of in seventh and mm -hmm. eighth but then even preparatory work for high school. Right. All right. You ready? Yes. We're going to do another weather problem. Another weather we problem. We kind of had one going with uh, the rain earlier, and uh, so well, now at least we snow? referenced it. So oh. now we're going to go snow. Oh, okay. Three snowstorms are about to hit this winter. Oh. Okay. Three storms. One will bring three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. The second one, six and a half. Six and a half inches. And the last one, ten and three fourths. Okay. We need to know the total amount of snow. Uh -huh. Total snow. All right. So to find the total, that means we're going to total up these three amounts of snow. That means we're going to add them together. So to add these together, I'm going to add them vertically. One way you could do it, especially with sixth grade now and working with some algebra problems, you could work it out horizontally and change these all into improper fractions and add them. But I'm going to go ahead and add them this way. Three and a half, six and one half, and ten and one, ten and three-fourths. Ten and three-fourths. Which is probably a little bit easier to see and understand when you do yes. get that denominator and, and this is nice because I'm going to work with the fraction part, I'm going to work with the whole number part, and then make sure that we simplify the answer when we're done. So before we can do anything, since we're working with fractions, we've got to make sure we have a lowest common denominator. And it's nice in this problem, the lowest common denominator in this problem is the smallest number that 2 and 4 will all go into, will both go into. And in this case, the LCD is going to equal 4. So my lowest common denominator is 4 because I know that 2 goes into 4, and 4 goes into 4, and that's the smallest number. So the nice thing is 3 fourths doesn't change. That's 3 fourths. And 1 half, if I divide 2 into 4, that goes 2 times, times 1. I know that 1 half is the same as 2 fourths. So to get my lowest common denominator, I'm going to change all of these fractions into fourths, 2 fourths, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths. Now all I have to do is add up my fractions, add up my whole numbers, and then simplify it. That means simplify and reduce, right? So I know when I add a fraction, I'm going to carry the denominator. That's going to be a 4. And I'm going to get 2 plus 2 plus 3. That's 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3. That's going to be 7 fourths. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 10 is 19. So my answer is 19 and 7 fourths. 
but I can't leave it that way, right? Seven fourths is an improper fraction. So I come over here and I take seven fourths and I'm going to divide four into seven. That's going to go one time. With the remainder, seven minus four is three. So I get seven fourths is one and three fourths. So I'm going to take the one and three fourths, the whole number one here, plus the 19 that I have here. And so all of my whole numbers are going to be 20. And my fraction is 3 fourths, and it is already reduced. I simplified it from an improper fraction to a mixed number. I don't have to reduce 3 fourths. That's going to be my answer. Total of 20 and 3 fourths inches. All right, nicely done. Thank you for that. 636-4357 is the phone number. Don't forget, toll free, 1-866-636-6284. For outlying areas of Kern County, as well as our friends over in San Luis Obispo County, if you call from San Luis Obispo County, uh, all you have to do is call in. That's right. You do your math problem. You win free ice cream at Doc Bernstein's. Can't and some that. say Doc Bernstein's. And when we talk to uh, Doc, <laughs> Doc over there, he uh, once again said, it doesn't matter how you say it as long as you like it, <laughs> right. which is a good thing right there. We'll be back with more right after this. Well, today we're in beautiful Lake Isabella. We're visiting Wallace Middle School, and today we're here to... All right, well, today we're at Wallace Middle School, and with us this afternoon, we have fifth grader Brooklyn. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful myself. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So it says, write as a decimal one and three-fifths. What form is this number in right now? A uh, fraction. Right, it's a fraction. The three-fifths is the fractional part, and then we have a whole number also. So all together, what is this? You know what that is? Mixed number. There you go, a mixed number. Now, there's a way we can turn this into an improper fraction. Let's just talk about that first. What would we do to turn this into an improper fraction? Well, I think that we could put the we could write our 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 to, to write it in a decimal. We could put the three on the inside of the box and the five on the outside of the box, and then start dividing. Okay, the improper fraction is what I think. So we're going to go five times. This is something different than what we're going to do. We just want to talk about a little something else. So five times one is five plus three is eight. So it would be 8 over 5 Yes. if we were going to do the improper fraction, because that's what a lot of students have learned first, is go from mixed number to improper fraction, back and forth. But you're mm -hmm. going to take it a step farther and go with the decimal. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and do that division like you were talking about. Okay, so we're going to put the 3 on the inside, and we have to add our two other decimal places, because you have to change it into a decimal. Okay. So it makes We may it not easier. need two decimal places, but you've got yeah. them all set. All right. And then this would be zero because five can't go into zero. I mean, three can't go into five. Well, five can't go into three. Yeah. Okay. And then um, five times 30, five divided by 30 is six. And that is 30. And he needs 30. <laughs> You're fine. You got it. And then you bring down the zero, and that's a zero. Okay. So if I wanted to rewrite this as a decimal, is it just 0.60? Yes. No, it would be 1.60 because there you, you have to add in your 1. Perfect. That's the whole number 1, and the fractional part is what we divided to get the 0.6. Yes. So go ahead and read the problem for us one more time, and then give us the answer. Okay, so write as a decimal 1 and 3 over 5, and you have to divide um, 3 by 5, and you get the answer 1 and Six tenths. There you go. Nicely done. Thank you. All right.
Good. And once again, a big thanks to everybody at Wallace Middle School. We had a great time while we were up there, and the kids were fantastic to work with. Once again, we have a sixth grade call-in contest going on for the month of January. If you're a sixth grader, do make sure you let them know that you're calling in for the contest for the month of January. Right now, we're going to do a little bit of exponential work. Okay. So we're going to look at some exponents and uh, a couple of different ways you'll see them when multiplying exponents. Right. So the first one, let's go 6a cubed times 3a. And would you like me to give you all the different ones? You can go through them, or do you want to do sure, them one let's, at a time? let's put them all down, and then we can compare them. Right. And you said 6a cubed, and cubed means to, to the, the third, third power. power. Right. right. And the reason I, I do that, I mean, the proper way to say it, but we had a student, and when he was in fifth grade, we were going over exponents for the first time. And his name, he was so-and-so the third. Uh-huh. Right? So I would call him cubed. <laughs> and he would never forget that it, if you're cubed, it is raised to the third, third power. power. So that was the way he remembered squared and cubed. Good. The next one, negative 5c squared times negative 3c to the seventh. And our final one, 4x squared times 3x to the fourth. All right, so what we have to do is simplify these by doing the multiplication. And you notice that each of these terms has a number part, the coefficient, and the variable part, which in some cases is raised to a power. So what we have to do is do this multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the number part times the number part. That's the easy part. 6 times 3 is 18. But now I've got to be careful because if I'm going to multiply, what do I do? Do I multiply a times a? Do I multiply 3 times a? Do I multiply 3 times, well, there's nothing there up above that a in this one. So we have to be careful when we do this. And we've got to remember what a to the third power means, right? It actually means a times a times a. And this is another a, so it turns out that a to the third power times a gives me 1, 2, 3, 4 a's multiplied together. So one way I could do this is to actually write it out and see the 4 a's, a to the fourth power. Or I can just do the multiplication up here, but when I do the multiplication, I've got to remember that a means a to the first power, right? That 3 means how many factors of a I have here. The 1 tells me how many factors of a I have here. So I could just... Now notice, not multiply 3 times 1. I've got to just count up how many a's I have. So I'm going to take 3 plus 1 and get to 4. So here's one case where we do multiplication by adding the exponents. Right? So it looks like our answer here is 18 a to the fourth power. Now I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. But I've got to be careful when I multiply my number part and my number part, I've got negative 5 times negative 3. So I know that negative times negative is positive, so that's going to give me 15. Now I don't want to write down C times C and then write 7 C's down here, so I'm just going to count them up, right? I've got 2, I've got 7 more, so all together I'm going to have, and sometimes the, the problem when they show it will actually show this step, I'm going to take 2 plus 7 as my exponent, and so my answer is going to be 15c to the ninth power. Notice, not 14th power, but ninth power. I'm not multiplying the 2 and the 7, I'm counting up, which means I'm adding the 2 and the 7. So this is going to be 15c to the ninth power. Oh, I'm sorry, it looks like I left off the... Uh, variable over here. So this should be 4x squared times 3x to the, was that a 4? I believe so. Right. So this is going to be, again, 4 times 3. That's my numerical part. So that's going to be a 12. And then I'm going to take x squared. That's x to the second power. x to the fourth. That's four factors. And when I take them all together, I'm going to have 2 from this one and 4 from that one. And so my answer will be 12 from the 4 times 3, and x to the 6th power, 2 plus 4, to give me 12x to the 6th power. 
And there are our three answers. All right, nicely done. Thanks for that because there are some students just getting into exponents and the different ways that they'll see them right. when multiplying right now. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. But right now, we're going to go back live to the home of the Eagles, Berkshire Elementary and Mary Lou. Thanks, Mike. And yes, we are live here at Berkshire Elementary School, ACES After School Program. And I am here with Brandon. Hi. How are you doing, Brandon? Good. And what grade are you in? Six. Mike, did you hear that? Sixth grade. So, mm, are you going to be calling in on the competition? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, have you been here since kindergarten? Yes. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing about the school? Uh, how fun we is. Yeah, like fun, what fun things do you guys do? Uh, we do like fun things in ma math. Oh, yeah. Is that your favorite subject? Yes. Oh, good, 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 good answer. All right, well, talking about math, we have a problem here, don't we? And it's a couple different parts. So let's read what the question is first. It says Alberto puts three kinds of fish in his fish tank, zebra, guppies, and catfish. Half of Alberto's fish are zebra. He has two times as many catfish as he has guppies. Now there's some really important information there, isn't there? So I'm gonna first underline important stuff. So we know there's three kinds of fish, right? So the zebra fish, the, gu the guppies, and the catfish. But right here it says he has half. He has half um, are his what, are his zebra, right? Yes. And then it says here he has two times two times as many catfish as he has guppies. So that means, does he have more catfish or more guppies? Catfish. He has more catfish. Okay, so let me, let's me let write over here some important information. First of all, we have our zebra. So let's write our zebra. Zebra or half. Right. And then what about our catfish? Oh, catfish or times two of whatever the guppies are. Very good, there you go. Okay, so that's important information. Now let's go here to the first question, the first part. So Alberto's friend says that a third of Alberto's fish are catfish. Is he correct? Mm, one way to show this is use a graph. Okay. And your graph is gonna need to be cut into six because both three, a third can go, and also a half, can go into six. Very good. So the third is coming from here, right? Yeah. Because we're trying to prove Alberto's friend's statement here. Okay. So let's break this into six pieces. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got six. Okay. So what? Now that we've done that, what do we want to shade in? And I think there's a red pin down there. You can use that too. What do we want to shade in first? You want to shade in half of the graph for the zebra fish. And so how many pieces are you shading in for half? Three. Three, because that's half, half of six. Very good. Okay, now what do you want to shade in? W one third of it of what's left. Because that's what Alberto's friend says that the catfish are, right? Yep. Okay, so let's mark this. We know that this is the zebra. And, and Alberto's friend says a third of this is catfish. How much do we have left? We have two whole thirds. We have two thirds, right? Because this is one third and this is one third, right? So we have two thirds left. Now let's go back to the original information. It says that our catfish is two times the guppies. Is this telling us that the catfish is two times the guppies? Um, no. No, it's actually saying what? The re The catfish or the guppies are two times of what the catfish is. Yeah, so is Alberto's friend correct? No. No, he's not correct, is he? And just simply by drawing a table or a graph, we could see how incorrect his friend is, right? Yes. So let's write a big no. We know that his friend is not correct. And again, we're showing it by our graph. Our graph, very good. Okay, now let's go over here, Brandon, to part B, okay? In part B, it says, one of Alberto's zebra fish is four thirds the length of one of his guppies. Which fish is longer? The zebra fish would be bigger because it's even it's greater than one whole of the guppy. Okay. Well, let's take four thirds. So let's write four over three, 
And can we change that to a mixed number? Because this is an improper fraction, right? Yes. Explain to me what an improper fraction is. An improper fraction is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Very good. So let's change this to a mixed number, okay? Do you know how to do that? Yes. Okay, so how do we do that? One way is to just do straight division, and all you need to do is think how many times does the denominator go into the numerator? Very good. And how many times does that? One whole time. And you'll have one as your new numerator. Three is still your denominator. And this is your whole number. Okay. Can you write that for us as a mixed number? So clearly here, we know that four over three is equal to one and one thirds. So right there, as you said, that obviously the zebrafish is larger, right? Because it's greater than one. One whole. And there you go. Very nicely done. Very impressed. Good job, Brandon. All right, Mike, before we go back to you, I have a question for you. They would like to know if both of them today go towards a sixth grade competition. Yes, they do. What we'll need <laughs> to do is, Mary Lou, what you'll need to do is while you're there, make sure you get what classrooms they're in. So what are their homeroom teachers if they don't move for math? So you'll need to get that information and then also let them know that they're also in the drawing for the Bakersfield Condors four pack. There you go. Very so, there you go. All we'll right, thank check you. back with you guys in a little while. 636-4357 is the phone number. As Mary Lou just alluded to, we do have a sixth grade call-in contest going on. Started today and it will go for the entire month of January. So anybody can call in to do the math at any point. However, when you phone in, if you are a sixth grader, make sure you let them know that you're calling in for the contest because the sixth grade classroom that has the most calls during this month will have do the math come out, visit them one day. We'll do some math activities, some games. Everybody will win some prizes and uh, it's a great time. I mean, yes. the schools that we've gone to for these things, really good. The, the kids just love it, and the teachers appreciate it, and it's just another way for us to go out and have some fun with some of the uh, students in some of the schools. More exponents. We're going to do them now. Okay. All right? Let's do it. First one, we're going to have, uh, we're going to multiply these, but the first set is going to be in parentheses. So we're going to go 6 times 10 cubed. That's all in one set of parentheses. Okay. The next set of parentheses is 4 times 10 to the first. 10 to the first? Yes. Okay. And we're going to multiply that and express in scientific notation. Scientific notation. That was going to be my question because I noticed that both of these numbers are written in scientific notation, so we have to put our answer in scientific notation. So the multiplication is pretty easy. We just need to make sure that just like with fractions, that we put our answer in simplest form, whether that's simplifying or, or, or reducing, or in this case, just putting it in the right form. So what I can do in this problem is I'll do the multiplication. I can multiply in any order I want. So I'm going to multiply the 6 times the 4. So that'll be the 24. And then I'll multiply 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 1st. So I know that this is going to be 10 to the 3rd. There's three factors of 10. 10 to the first is one factor, so I'm going to get 10 to the, not 3 times 1, but 3 plus 1. So my answer is 24 times 10 to the fourth. Now that's my answer, but it's not in the correct form. I need this to be in scientific notation. And so what we need to remember is what scientific notation is. In scientific notation, it's going to be some number times a power of 10, but that some number has to be bigger than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So 24 doesn't work. So I need this to be bigger than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So what we have to do is we have to write this and put the decimal in the right place. So I'm going to take this number right here, 24, and I'm going to write it in scientific notation. Just ignore that for a minute. So to make this a number less than 10, I have to put the decimal between the 2 and the 4. But 2.4 is not the same as 24, so I have to multiply this by something to get 24. So what do I have to multiply 2.4 by to get 24? Well, the nice thing is I know that all I have to do to move a decimal is multiply or divide by 10. If I want to make this bigger, I'm going to multiply this times 10 to the first power, right? 
2.4 times 10 to the first. If I do this, and I won't do this every time, but if I took 2.4 and multiply it by 10, I get 240 with one decimal point there. So I get an answer of 24. So I know that this, 2.4 times 10 to the first, is the same as 24. And I have to remember I still have a 10 to the fourth here. So now I have my number less than 10 and bigger than 1. And now I'm going to take and change my parentheses and write this as 10 to the first times 10 to the fourth. That's actually an example of the um, associative property. Instead of associating these, I'm going to do those. And I get 2.4 times 10 to the first times 10 to the fourth. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 10 to the fifth power is my answer to this problem in scientific notation. Nicely done. Now that you're comfortable with scientific uh -huh. notation, go ahead and erase that. Okay. Because I'll give you numbers in scientific notation and I want you to put them in standard notation. Okay. So the first one is 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. The next one will be 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. That way we'll go both ways here yeah, as far so as here we the have large to, and the small number. We have to work with negative exponents, which is brand new for a lot of students. So. so there's two ways of doing this problem. One way is just go right at it and just change 10 to the fifth to standard notation. And I could do this as 1.2 times 10 to the fifth means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Five factors of 10 multiplied together. Now, the nice thing about multiplying by 10 is all I have to do is add zeros, right? So 10 times 10 is 100. There's three of them. There's four of them. There's five of them. So one way I could do this problem is just multiply 1.2 times, uh, times 100,000, and I'll get my answer. But that's actually way too much work because I know that multiplying by 10, not only does it just add zeros to the 1, but what it does here is, is, instead of thinking of it as adding zeros, what it's going to do is it's going to move the decimal point. So every time I multiply by 10, all I'm going to do is, without changing these digits, just move the decimal point. And in this case, I'm going to move the decimal point to make it bigger. So instead of doing this problem, I'm going to do this problem. I'm going to take 1.2 and when I multiply it by 10 to the fifth, I'm simply going to move the decimal. One, two, three, four, five places to make the number bigger. And I can't just leave those spaces there and say it's 12 with a bunch of space after it. I've got to put in my placeholders, my zeros. And so it turns out that 1.2 times 10 to the fifth is one, two, three, four, five. 120,000. There's my standard notation for that number. Okay? So that's making the number bigger. Now, now let's, let's get a very small number. And see what this does. Again, I could think of this as 7.2 times, now 10 to the negative 1 fourth means 1 over 10 to the fourth, which means 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 over 10,000. I'm doing way too much work. I'll say that again, okay? Which is, let's see, 10 thousandths. That's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. It's point zero 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 one. So I could get my answer by changing it to this fraction, to this fraction, to this decimal, do the multiplication and get my answer. But instead of doing all of this, what we're going to do is we're going to take 7.2 times, now by multiplying by 0.001, all that means is I'm going to multiply, keep the same digits, and let me get rid of this. And all I have to do is make my number smaller by moving my decimal point one place for every decimal place here. 
I've got four decimal places here, which is the same as the four up here. So all I have to do is take my decimal point here, and since it's negative, I go in the negative direction and make my number smaller. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four places here, and again, I've got to fill in these blank spaces with my placeholders. And so my answer to this problem is zero point, I'll put a zero in front, one, two, three zeros, seven, two, that's point zero, 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 seven, two, or 72 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, 72 hundred thousandths would be my answer. All right, nicely done. Glad I didn't give you a uh, 10 to the negative 12th or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Make yeah. things a little more interesting there. So again, what's in the box up here is the way you could do the problem. What we did was down here, much, much easier. A little simpler. 636-4357 is the phone number. We'll be back with more right after this. This competition is called Skyrise. These guys are moving the cubes around to score them on the different parts. The robots are similar to last year's, but there's a lot of distinct changes that they made from last year to this year. They actually used a little claw that, that they didn't get to you before, and so it's kind of fun. Our second year now, so we're trying to transfer knowledge from the first year kids to the second year meds. And, and that's part of scouting too, is the older boys teach the younger ones how to tie knots, how to do different things, and that, that falls them in with this. It's also STEM, it's it's you know this math and engineering stuff, and so they take to it and they like it a lot. It gives you a creativity and more imagination. It, open up, it opens up your imagination to a new place where you could build anything you pretty much want. We've actually got both schools, Central Coast New Tech High School is part of our team too because they don't have their own separate team. We just had a lot of success, so from the first year, we've gone to Worlds five of the uh, seven left years, and we get great community support, and we have a very well-known name in the community. I love challenges, and I love challenges that make me think harder than I have to. Ten seconds. So California alone has teams in the thousands, and overall VEX has about 12,000 teams in counting. It is difficult in that we have to align ourselves with other teams to strategize and score as much as we can and help out the other team to get our strength of schedule points. And these strength of schedule points allow for a higher ranking in the actual tournament itself. It's not as much the competition as it is the actual robotics program in itself. Because these kids are learning programming and mechanical skills and all of that, which companies like Nestle and GMR Vineyards and Grimway, they all have robotic equipment in their facilities. So it's kind of nice for them to see these kids getting that practical experience and become robotics people that program and do all that and their facility, and that's what they're looking for. I know there are quite a few times when we have the robotic students come into the set of Do The Math and mm -hmm. put on a little demonstration for us, how they get their teams together, the uh, various strategies that they go through, and the different obstacles that they have to do every single year. Because that determines what kind of robot they they're going to make. Robot, it. Right. That's right. I mean, it was amazing with what they had to, to, to do those robots. They, to do whatever task it was. And if I'm not mistaken, we had you control yeah, one, one was, year, right? Trying to do the. Yeah, it was pretty uh, cool. It was, yeah, it was amazing. So you're a, <laughs> not a novice, but right. not yet an expert. So you're exactly. getting some more skills. So we'll see if we can get some of those kids in here again this year before they do another one of their competitions. 
636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. And who knows, maybe some of these students out of Berkshire Elementary would be uh, robotic engineers, possibly. We'll go out and visit them one last time with Mary Lou. Thanks, Mike. Um, again, we're here at Berkshire Elementary School, ACES After School Program, and it's been a, a great, great time here at the school. And I wanted to thank Evan and Brandon for helping us out today, and I have a little present for both of you. Can you hold those up for us? Okay. Now, there's one condition for these. Here, hold it up. You guys have to wear these because guess what's on front of it? The, do the math along with the what? Phone, phone number. number. The phone number. And you could tell all of your friends in your classrooms to call, especially because of the sixth grade calling competition, right? Are you both in different classes? Yes. <gasps> oh, there you go. Okay, so the competition is on, huh? I wonder which class is going to win. So you got to make sure you give your friends the phone number and tell them to call, right? right. Well, month of January, what days do they call on? Tuesdays, um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah, you got it. Right, what time? 5.30. Till 5.30, right? What time does it start at? 3.30. There you go, you got it. I'm also here today with Chase Hicks. Hi, Chase. Hi. And can you give us your title with the ACES After School Program? Yeah, so during the day I teach first grade here at Berkshire, but then after school I do uh, ACES Liaison. So, and what is that? We do some fun activities. So, our goal was that we wanted it to be different than the regular school day. We didn't want it to be uh, so regimented, if you will. We wanted them to be able to innovate and create. So, we're really giving them fun tools to use their minds in a new way, in a new exciting way, and create what they want to create. So, how do what do they do? You were talking a little bit about iPads. Yeah. So we there is an Aces iPad cart that rotates, and I also have a cart of laptops in my classroom that we um, do some research with on. So we I let them pick recently. They picked an animal, and then they got to research every aspect of that animal on their own, and whatever they wanted to find out, they got to find out, and they searched it, researched it, and then wrote up a wonderful little piece about it. Now, do you do certain grade levels, or do you do all grade levels here? I'm here. I'm doing second and third grade. So staying in that primary level. Okay. Lots so. of other things. Any other fun projects coming up? Coming up, we are doing a planet uh, unit. And so again, it's similar to the animal one where they get to pick a planet, they're gonna research the planet, and then eventually we're gonna move to uh, making the planet. Oh. So, so they're gonna make an actual model or an something on the computer? An actual model, oh. yeah. So the old paper mache trick. Oh, oh yep. that's so yep. much fun. So. And also what we found out real quick is that you actually called and do the math. I did, yeah. Back when I was in elementary school, which was, yeah. Oh, wow. oh, and I called because I wanted to be on air. Yeah. <laughs> there you <laughs> yeah. go. Well, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you so for much. your help today. Mm -hmm. And again, it's been a great time here at Berkshire Elementary School. And remember, we're going to do the math. All right. Well, that's pretty cool that he called in do the math when he was younger. As a matter of fact, Mary Lou, I want you to stick close to those kids because one of those students out there is about to win a four-pack to the Bakersfield Condors. So right now, we're going to find out who's right. going to the Condors. Okay, and it is Evan. All right, there you go. So congratulations to Evan. Go and see the Bakersfield Condors. Right. We'll deliver those out to his school. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, and Panama Buena Vista Union School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.